So you're over 40, you're midlife, and you haven't built a personal brand, and you're wondering if you've missed the boat. As someone who's in midlife, this is the absolute best time in our history to start a personal brand. It's easier, less technical, and people your age are in high demand. Marketing firms, brands, PR agencies, they are all desperate to work with people who are over 40, 50, 60, even 70. And that's because of the unique experience, relatability, trustworthiness, authenticity, just the realness that someone your age brings to the market. It just comes with being a little older. I mean, there's an undeniable relatability and confidence that comes with having the type of knowledge and experience that you have. Because you are a midlifer, you attract people who are also in their midlife, which means you're attracting people who've got the money and brands love that. And whether that benefits your own personal brand or a bigger brand, at the end of the day, it's more money. But what does it take to start a personal brand? Should you seriously consider it? Do you need to quit your job or is this something you can do on the side? How much work is really involved? Do you have to be a master of social media, great on camera, really good looking, have some really unique talent? The answer to all those questions and more today I'm gonna share with you in this episode. I've helped hundreds of thousands of people to build their own personal brands and I have to tell you, I am so excited. I am so excited for those of you who are in midlife and considering for the first time doing this. Maybe this is like the 2.0 version of your life. Maybe you, your kids are grown or maybe you're anticipating that you're going to go through a season where you need something of your own. Whatever the reason is, I can't encourage you strongly enough to take action and just get started. And that's why I've made this episode for you today. Let's get into it. If you just think about human nature, if you just think about the type of people and influencers that you're watching on social media that you find um, annoying and completely inauthentic, I think it's no wonder that not just the market, but branding agencies and marketing agencies and the world in general is kind of sick of these, you know, no offense, younger influencers who pretend as though they know it all, these boss babes, these billionaire boys clubs, these they're really kids who are putting together on social media this life that just doesn't look real. And we, we're not falling for it anymore. It's like so much based on aesthetics. And you hear the advice, you hear the wisdom that they have to share. And somebody like us is thinking, yeah, I, I don't buy it. Like, kid, you haven't been around long enough to be telling me how to live my life. There's just a lack of credibility when it comes with certain people of a certain age giving advice. And and maybe that has to do with my own age. I, I tend to look at the individual and I, and I look at how much experience do they have? How much have they done? Do they have the chops? Do they have the receipts? Because if they don't, no matter how fancy and well-produced their social media is, I'm not buying it. We want real. We want authentic. We want relatable. We want people that we can trust. And that's what we're looking for online today. So let's start with you. Should you consider building a personal brand? Because I'm going to shoot completely straight with you. Like this is not one of those, like everyone needs to do this. Not necessarily. I don't think everyone needs to do this, but I think that you're probably watching and listening to this episode because there's something inside of you saying, I, I feel like I should be doing this. Allow me to help you figure that out. The first thing you have to ask yourself is, are you willing to put in the time? And this is something you can definitely do part-time. You don't have to quit your job. You don't have to be an empty nester. You don't have to devote all of your efforts to building an online social media presence. You don't. But the more time you put into it, the quicker your personal brand is going to have notoriety. Things you need to consider though, aside from like, okay, do I have enough time? Like a couple of hours a week to start doing this. Aside from the time, what's in it for you? Like, why should you do this? I think it's really important for Gen Xers because number one, the economy, like it's so unpredictable. Jobs are so unpredictable. We just don't know what's going to happen with AI and automation. We're seeing more and more and more people lose their jobs or their jobs are changing and they're they're making less money. Pensions aren't what they used to be. Like, when's the last time you heard someone talking about their 401k or their retirement plan? Social security is certainly uncertain. I mean, there's just so many reasons financially that it just makes sense to have a plan B, a, a what if. And, and so like those are kind of the um, practical reasons why like financially it just makes no sense today to rely on one stream of income. I don't care how solid you think your job is. I don't care 
how great you think um, your savings are or your investments or your spouse's income or what, whatever it is. If it's one stream of income, that's hella risky. Even if you already have a business and you don't have a well-developed personal brand, that's risky. A personal brand is something no one can ever take away from you. Hey, before we go much further, I have a special favor to ask of you. It's not going to cost you a dime. And I think it's probably going to bring you a lot of good karma. Pretty sure of that. It's so easy. If you've made it to this point in the video, can I just encourage you to subscribe? It's completely free. You can unsubscribe if a video shows up and you're like, okay, I don't like her anymore. It's easy. It's free. And if you hit that notification bell, you get like bonus points somewhere. I'm sure they're redeemable, probably at your favorite restaurant. So hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. Let me know that it was me begging for the subscribe that got you to subscribe today. Drop that in the comments below um, because, you know, you'll get priority treatment in the comments. That's for sure. All that begging for subscribes really got me thirsty. Let's get back to the content. The other reasons why you might want to consider starting today, building your personal brand is because it's, it's you, it's your legacy. It's your reputation. It is what people will remember you for and buy. Your personal brand is the ultimate currency. You should start a personal brand because there are things that have happened in your life. There are things that you've experienced. There's things that you have figured out that just make no sense why you had to go through that or wh why this weird connection of all the different things you've done in your life, how it's like all come together and now you have this like really unique knowledge and perspective and you're just going to die with that? Like you're not going to share that with the freaking world when there's things like this? you know, podcasts and YouTube and, and social media where you can help hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of strangers by learning from your missteps, you know, like teaching from a place where you're like, I, I've been through it and let me save you some time. Let me save you some headache. Let me save you some heartache. You know, when I think about all of the crazy weird things I've done in my life, and I'm sure this is probably true for you too, you start to realize that there are some through lines, even, you know, when I think about like me selling cars back in college, when I think about, you know, working as a paralegal, working as a personal trainer, creating programs for other fitness trainers, then creating programs to help people who want to start a business know like where to start and what to do and then how to grow a digital brand. Like the through line in all of this was I was solving a problem for me. And I would often figure out a way that I could make it less complicated and easier. And then once I did that, I'm like, I'm, I'm sure there's other people who want this to be less complicated for them. And, and so there's a through line in everything and all the experience that you've had. There's a through line there. And I think it's just so profoundly fulfilling to use that and in a greater way to have an impact on the world. Now, if that does not resonate with you, if having an impact on the world, if like helping other people, serving other people, you know, just having, like, let's just talk about the selfish reasons. Like just having someone come up to you and go like, you changed my life. You don't know how much you helped me or you saved me thousands of dollars or you saved me a heartache or you gave me hope. Like having somebody, just even one person say that to you, I can't even tell you how overwhelmingly grateful and humbling it is to have someone say that to you. And imagine you know, a dozen people saying that to you or, or thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people, you know, like for ego, selfish reasons, like that's a really profound inspiration when it comes to like creating a personal brand. Cause you can have that kind of impact on the world. You know, and that's kind of like, like I said, that's the, the personal stuff, knowing that you can leave your mark on the world. But then there's the practical reasons, like the financial reasons, the the lack of security and and with personal brands being your currency. So if neither of those two things excite you or feel like a motivating reason why you should start a personal brand and you don't have the time, well, I just want to say thank you for spending this much time with me watching this video. And you know, if you're just here for entertainment purposes, awesome. But the rest of this video just isn't for you. And 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 building a personal brand really isn't for you. And that's okay. Not everyone has to do that. But the ironic thing that you need to know is you already have a personal brand. Your personal brand is it's exactly what friends use to describe you to another friend uh, who's never met you. It's what they say, 
oh, I want you to meet my friend Donna. She's incredibly fit. She's really creative. She's and they start to tell like your your story. It's 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 your story. It's your reputation. It's how people know you and describe you. That's your personal brand. But what I'm sharing with you today is what you need to do to to turn into a business, basically. So where do you start? Where do you start if you want to build a personal brand? Well, the very first thing you need to do is figure out what that one thing is that you want to start with because you have to be known for something first in order to make an impact. Now, I know and you know that at your age, at our age, we've been through a bajillion things. I've had so many experiences. I could literally pick you know, any number of, I I could pick like 10 different things and go, all right, I want my personal brand to be about this. That's the other really cool thing about someone your age is you've got the chops, you've got the receipts, you've been through it and you survived. You didn't just survive. Now you've thrived, you figured it out and that'll never freaking happen to you again. But the thing is you have to pick one and that's going to be the hardest assignment for anyone who wants to build a personal brand. I know it was for me. Super exciting. At the end of this video, I did a complete Instagram makeover. So you would know, those of you who are starting to build your personal brand today, I'm going to show you like in 10 minutes how you can make over your Instagram or your YouTube or your TikTok or, or even your Facebook profile so that it begins to promote your brand. So stay tuned for that. As I mentioned, in college, I started a business called the All Michigan Auto Swap Meet. It's how I paid my way through college, basically buying and selling cars. And then I started a weekend event where I would invite people to sell their cars on this car lot, uh, people who were private sellers. And then I would invite private buyers to come in and buy their cars from them. And I had some moderate success with that. You know, it was something that made me very proud to be that young and to have started, you know, a business while I was at Michigan State. But I was doing a lot of other things too. I was, you know, I was waitressing. I was working as a paralegal. I was preparing myself to go to law school. At Michigan State, I studied justice, morality, and constitutional democracy. My reputation within my family and friends was that I was a future attorney. Like that's who I told the world I was. And so there's a piece of personal brand that's who have you been telling people you are? So I was doing that. I was also always telling people that I was an entrepreneur from like age 15. I identified as that as well. I At about age probably 18, I started teaching fitness classes on the side too. So I was also doing that in college as well. Um, I, I just did it for fun. I, I wasn't that great at it, but I enjoyed it. And it really made me feel, made me feel like this high every time I did a workout. And I loved music. I was uh, someone who enjoyed debate, obviously. And I liked, you know, writing. These are all the things I enjoyed doing. And I wanted to teach other women how to start a personal training business. I wanted to teach other women how to start something on their side, on the side. So I, I wanted to teach women how to start a business. I wanted to do all of these things. And I wanted to continue teaching fitness classes. At one point, I even started a business where I was franchising in-home personal training and teaching personal trainers how to do in-home personal training. So I'm doing all of these things. Can you picture all of these balls up in the air? And all at once, P.S. I'm doing all of these things all at once and wondering why I'm I'm not known for any one thing, wondering why it was so difficult for me to introduce myself to other people and tell them what I did because I was doing everything. I was wondering why I was working so freaking hard. I was so creative, but I just was never like cracking the code. Like why couldn't I get ahead financially? And it wasn't until I took the advice of a mentor who said, you have to focus on one thing. I know you could do all of these things, but in order to build a personal brand, you have to become known. It's the art of being known. And I'm like, but I'm afraid to pick one of these things because I don't know which one is the right one. Does that resonate with you? Like, do you feel like you have so much personal experience and so many things that you truly have some passion for that it's difficult to know like what is the thing? And it's almost scary to pick the wrong thing. If that's you, I can so relate. And I, and I want to tell you, you might pick the wrong thing, but you have to pick. 
And it doesn't always have to be the thing that you're the most passionate about. I had passion for fitness. I still do. But it wasn't the thing that I was like uber, uber passionate about. The thing that I'm uber, uber passionate about is just teaching. Like I love like doing this for you. I love teaching. I love teaching people how to start a side hustle. I love teaching people how to break down any complicated system and make it basic. I, I just love teaching. But fitness was something that I, I saw an opportunity. I saw an opportunity to monetize it because I saw that there was a really big need and there was a big market for it. And I really didn't know quite how to ha- get that same opportunity in other areas that felt like I was in over my head. Like to teach marketing at that point felt like I was in over my head. I just didn't see the same opportunity. So I decided to double down and just brand myself as a fitness expert, which is crazy. So I decided to not go to law school crazy, which is so weird because now that I'm breaking free from this identity that I had given myself, like, who am I now? I'm an aerobic instructor. Like that doesn't sound that impressive. It would be much more exciting for my parents to be able to say, oh, our daughter's a lawyer. So it was, it was hard to break that news to my family. It was hard to make that decision. I felt like I would be less valuable as a person if I was going into fitness. At that time, no one in, no one I knew in fitness was making any money. It was something they did because they loved. But I wanted to take what I knew about entrepreneurship, personal branding and marketing and apply it to something that I had some passion for and saw an opportunity. And so I decided to double down and go all in on my brand when it came to fitness. I started declaring what my brand was. So that's your first step is you've got to pick. You've got to pick the thing you want to be known for. And the way to do that is to make a list of all like the, you know, five or 10 things. You're like, I, it could be this. It could be that. It could be this. Like come up with all the reasons or all the different ideas. And they usually will relate to a problem that you've solved, a past experience that you've been through or something that's like, this is my jam. I know this better than anybody. This is the thing that people come to me for. This is the thing I'm good at. This is the thing I'm like, like the thing that I like, put all of those on the page. And once you take a look at that list, then I want you to circle the one or two where you're like, there's an opportunity, like there's a market that wants this. There's a need, there's there's a, a place for this because someone isn't doing it quite the way I would do it. Now, trust me. Anything you're going to tell me like you're, that you might say, is the market saturated in that? I'm going to tell you the market is never saturated in exactly the way you're going to do it. Was the, market, was the fitness market completely saturated when I entered it? Of course. And it's still saturated and people are still rising to the top. It's about knowing what's unique about the way that you do something. So if you have a unique twist on something, there's your opportunity. And I knew that I had a unique twist on the way I put together the music, the sound effects, and the choreography, and the way that I package it for other fitness professionals, the way it made people feel. I knew that I had something really unique that solved a problem for other fitness instructors who didn't know how to create classes like that. And that was the first thing that I started branding myself as, is this fitness expert who was designing choreography for other fitness instructors. So you've got to go all in, and you might not pick the right one. I had no idea if I'd pick the right one. You will get a sense that you're making some traction, but let me just be very honest with you. Once you pick like one thing that you're going to focus on and you've been talking about 10 things in social media and with your friends and and, in life, well, those other nine things, you the people who are interested in those other nine things, they kind of like, oh, the camera followed me. That was fun. It's so cool. The iPhone is so cool. I'm like using my iPhone right now. Like watch. What? Oh, hi, honey. You want to come dance with me? (laughs) This camera is so cool. Anyways, what was I saying? ADHD. So once you focus on one thing, you're going to lose some people's interest. And that's okay. It's In fact, you have to do that. Another great example of this. My son Brock, when he decided to go all in on his niche, which is helping people to grow on Instagram... Until that time, he posted like any random person does about their interests, about his girlfriend, about football, about Pokemon cards, like whatever. He posted about everything. And he had, you know, a decent sized following. I think he had like 10,000 followers or something. And when he started just posting about Instagram tips to grow your Instagram business, his engagement and followers like tanked because 
you know, a large majority of those people weren't following him just for Instagram tips. But what that allowed him to do was to stand out. And today he has almost 700,000 followers. He gained 400,000 followers in a year. But you've got to niche down. You've got to pick your thing. You have to pick your thing. If you have the courage to just pick your niche, that's step one. Now you've got to like really tell the world, this is my niche. And you have to be okay with doing this for, for like a year. Unless you just feel like immediately it's the wrong thing. I'm not passionate. About it. I already hate it. All right, then fine. Switch to one of the other ones. And guess what? No one's going to die. But you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to build your brand. People aren't going to come looking for you. People aren't even going to talk about you if you don't decide on one thing that you stand for. That's the hardest thing for people to wrap their heads around. It's the hardest thing for people to do. And you need tenacity and you need determination and you need discipline to be able to stick to that. I didn't just want to post about fitness. I wanted to post about a million other things, but I decided to go all in for at least a year. Now, how long is it going to take for you? How long does it take to start your personal brand? Today, that's it. You can just decide right now what your niche is. And then it's a matter of basically telling people, this is my thing. You you have to be the PR agent. You have to be the one who tells people what your reputation is. It's not just letting people figure it out. Like You actually have to tell people what it is you stand for, what it is you help people with, and what your brand... You've got to define your brand. You know, I hear a lot of people say it's, it's how other people describe you a little bit, but it's also how you teach them to describe you. Your next step is to figure out who specifically it is you help. If you tell me I help all women fill in the blank, that's not niche down enough. You really need to specifically know who it is you help and how it is you want to help them. And a lot of this, if I'm being honest, you're just going to figure out as you go. So again, don't worry about getting that wrong. If you look at my Instagram bio, I change it all the time because I'm always refining my personal brand. Once I became known for fitness, and for those of you who know my story, I eventually, my husband and I, we, we, we built this company that was a certification company. We had thousands, hundreds of thousands of instructors who were teaching our programs all over the globe. Eventually, we then signed a an infomercial deal. And we did years of fitness infomercials. We sold our companies. We sold all the fitness companies. We stopped doing fitness, generally speaking. And then I stopped branding myself as a fitness expert. I started branding myself as a lifestyle and business expert. I started doing a business podcast. I started talking about lifestyle and, and business tips on, on my uh, Shaleen show and, and on Build Your Tribe. I started creating academies and courses and programs and, and speaking on stages, not as a fitness professional. I started declining all of my fitness invitations and I just took engagements where they were paying me to be a paid expert on business and marketing. I, I had to tell the world what my new brand was. I, you can say reinvented myself, but I didn't. I just evolved. That was the next evolution. And if that's something you're struggling with is letting go of a past identity, I want to recommend you listen to the episode that I did about what it means to, to let go, to move on, to evolve, to change, to reinvent yourself and how to do that and how to know if in fact it's time for you to do that because that can be pretty scary, but it's what I did. And when I did that, I cleaned up all my social. There was no more fitness posts. It was all lifestyle and marketing. And what happened when I did that? I lost a lot of followers who were following me just for fitness and I gained people who were just looking how to start a business who people who were like easily distracted like myself. So what I'm trying to explain to you is it's a process and you're not going to get that instant gratification. If you're afraid that you're going to get fewer likes or if you think that because you get fewer likes or less engagement on your social, that, that means you've picked the wrong niche. It's not true. You have to double down so that those people can find you. And then the next step is we've got to clean up your act. So it's really easy when people look for two seconds at your social media, what it is you do. So once you've determined your niche, I want to show you really easily how we can give you an Instagram or you can do this as a, a, a Facebook makeover or a YouTube makeover. It's a matter of helping people identify you and your brand. So I'm going to take you through in this example, 
one that we can do on Instagram, but you can do these exact same things and you should be doing these exact same things to clean up your image and your reputation on whatever social media platform you use. Now, I do want to say this, when it comes to building a, a personal brand when you're in midlife, I think right now the play is long form video. The play here is how do I build trust? How do I build authenticity? And you know how you don't do that? You don't build trust and authenticity by lip syncing to a song and pointing to words on a video like they're on reels or, you know, doing a TikTok dance. Like that's, that's just, that might get your views and that might be working for some 20 year olds, but it's not what we're looking for. We want a conversation. We want to hear about your experiences, your stories. We want to hear about your past. We want to hear about the thing, like you're a queenager. Like you have so much knowledge. You run circles around these young whoopersnappers that they just, they don't have the experience to be able to have the credibility. And with age and wisdom comes confidence where it's like, it's so nice to say, really? Well, I'm older than you. Like that's the ultimate Trump. I love having that in my back pocket. It just gives me a certain sense of confidence. So long form video is not just YouTube, right? But you can put long form video now on TikTok and also on Instagram. It's, it's going live. It's, and the reason why I really like this for those of you who are building a, a brand in midlife is because it's real. Like these really short videos where they're jump cuts and they're overly produced and there's flying emojis and captions and, you know, scenes change and special effects. I just, I don't know about you, but you're going to attract people like you. And I don't relate to that. Do you? I relate to a real conversation. I relate to an authentic person who's talking to me without reading a script, without trying to come across a certain way. Like, just be real. You don't have to be like, you know, camera ready at all times. You can have no makeup. You can have glass. Like, what you look like does not matter right now. Social media has completely changed. We want authenticity over aesthetics all day long. And when I say we, I mean people who are your age. And we're the ones who have the money. We're the ones who have the buying power. We're, and we're the ones who have the influence over each other. You've got a real opportunity to crush it with your personal brand because a lot of people our age are afraid to do this. I don't get it but they're afraid to be judged. They're afraid of what people will say. They're afraid they're not going to be good enough. They're going to, my wrinkles will show, people might call me old. So what? What a compliment. Go ahead, call me old. I don't care. I'm older than you. Maybe I'm not older than you, but I, I don't care. If you, that's such a compliment to be able to make it to this point and still be relevant and still have something to share. What a privilege. So that's not a put down. I don't care. I watched a TikTok the other day and it was a girl doing like a, um, like a skincare routine. And I was reading the, I was reading how many of the people in the comments said, cause she said her age. And so many people in the comments were like, Oh my gosh, you look so young. Oh, I'm shocked by that. You look so young. Are you ready for this? She's 29. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, you silly little fetuses. You just, that's so cute of you. Like who cares what anyone thinks? Literally. But I think the way to go is long form video. It's, you don't have to just open up your camera and talk. Pick the platform that you spend the most time on already. So maybe you're here watching this on YouTube. Maybe you're listening on a podcast. Those of you who are interested in podcasting and just doing audio, that's a possibility. But I'm going to tell you that the way to crush it on podcasts today is with YouTube video. Like I, I've gained over 70,000 new followers just this month on YouTube alone. And why? Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because you connect with me when you see me on video it, in a more profound, deeper, faster way. You have to listen to so many audio episodes in order to have that same kind of connection that somebody feels when they watch on video. And some of you have been listening to my show on audio only for you know may maybe eight or 10 years and I'd love to just invite you to jump over to YouTube and, and see how it feels maybe different if you watch it on, on video. And I know you guys have already told me, 
I don't want to watch on video. I, I, I like driving in my car and uh, just listening. Well, you can do that on YouTube as well. You don't have to be watching me like the whole time, but every once in a while, just like glancing in saying, oh, what is she wearing? Where are they staying? How is her hair today? All those things. You look at facial expressions and you, that's how we decide if we can trust someone. And when I said that your personal brand is your currency, it's your currency if you have trust. And trust comes from a believability, a relatability, a reliability, like you just keep showing up and that gives you a certain degree of, of trust. And then there are people who are like, you know, they've been with me for a long time. They're a part of my Patreon. There's so many ways that you can serve and build your community. But let's go back to what we're going to do to make over your Instagram bio. I'm fortunate enough to work with some incredible people who are specifically trained, like their sole job is to work with people who are midlife and help them build huge brands. Like what does it take to be over 45, to be 55, 65, even 70 years old and to build a huge personal brand? I would love to bring some of those experts here to the show and and let you ask the questions of them. If that's something you would be interested in, like like hearing, like how did Emily D. Baker do it? How does somebody like an Amy Porterfield or a Marie Forleo or a, you know, that person who you're thinking you'd like to be like an Andrew Huberman, what does it take to build a personal brand quickly? If that's something that you would like to hear more from the experts who've helped people to do that, drop a comment below and, and, and just say, yes, I'd love to hear from the expert. And if you do put, yes, I'd love to hear from the expert, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, you'll miss it entirely. Because if enough people say, yes, I want to hear from the experts, then I will bring you the best people to the show. We'll interview them and you'll miss it unless you're subscribed and you turn on that little notification bell. If you have those two things in place, you're going to catch that video. Now it's time to really define your brand in social media. All right, let's start with Lisa, Lisa Roach. First, thing I see is that I, I don't even know who this is. And so many of you, what you're going to need to do is find a headshot. Now you can just take this right now with your iPhone because you don't even have to worry about the quality of it. You can put a filter on it if you want, but we need a clean headshot, just your mug. Because I can't relate to Lisa when I can't even see, it looks like maybe she has a mask on, which means she probably hasn't even updated this photo since the pandemic. She says that she's a mommy to an angel baby, Susie, which explains why she's used a social media handle. Lisa, her name is Lisa. And you want to start by remembering the thing that's never going to change is your name. So even if you have a really common name, like your name is, let's say, Lisa Smith, you could be the official Lisa Smith or Lisa Smith is here or Lisa Smith, like something that includes your name. And you don't even have to use your whole name, but you should definitely use part of your name. I can't tell you how many times I've met individuals at events and they'll walk up to me and they're like, we talk all the time. Shalene, I am fit mom 47 puppy lover. Like I'll, I'll never remember that. And I have no connection with you. We are connected by our names. It says something about us. Your personal brand starts with your personal name. So change your handle on all social media profiles. Try to pick something that's available across all of them. And you might have to be creative if you have a, a very, you know, common name, but you'll find it, I promise you. So the first thing we have to do with Lisa is we've got to zoom in on her face. We need to see her face. So I scrolled back through her social media account and found this image of Lisa. I just cropped it. And then what I did is I put it into Canva. In Canva, they've got, which is a free program, you just put it into Canva and you simply remove the background. So that gave her just the cropped shot of her head. Then I placed another color behind her and just uploaded that as her new profile picture on Instagram. We picked this bright chartreuse yellow because that's like one of her favorite colors. And it's really a great color that just pops off the page. Like you're, you're going to see that color and instantly identify, oh, that's, that's Lisa, right? And now we're seeing her face. Now I can connect with her. Now there's something about her eyes and like that flower in her hair. Like you already know some things about Lisa that we had no idea of. Like maybe she posted another photo of herself in the gym that like post gym workout selfie because she thought she looked 
like, you know, really fit that day. But we don't connect with people because of their bodies. We connect with people because of their eyes, because of their face, because of that relatability that we're looking for and we see in people's faces. The next thing we did was changed her username. Again, your username is the name you're going by on that social media platform. So I'm Shalene Johnson across all the platforms here on YouTube. I'm, it's youtube.com forward slash Shaleen Johnson. It's a Shaleen Johnson. It's the Shaleen show. It's Shaleen Johnson on uh, Twitter. It's Shaleen Johnson on Instagram. It's try to pick a name and then use that username across all social media platforms so that it's it's more consistent. When it comes to Instagram, the name area, the name field on Instagram only, this is not true on TikTok or on YouTube, but on Instagram, the name field, there's no reason for you to put your name there again. Okay. So it's in this field that I want you to tell people your brand, like what is it that you do? So at the time of my recording, Lisa's brand is she's someone who helps people with makeup, specifically women who are super busy and have like five minutes or less to put on their makeup. So we're going to use that field because it is search engine optimized on Instagram. And we're going to place whatever your brand is, whatever it is somebody might be searching for that you help them with, put it in that field. Now below that, you'll see that Lisa has written a bunch of things that a lot of you probably have in your social media. They're things that are like clever or funny or you think are relatable, but they're just, they're not helping anyone. You know, so for example, she says, I'm a mommy to an angel baby named Susie. Great, great for her. But like, you know, no offense, who cares? Like that's not helping anybody. She says, I'm unable to quit because I am currently too legit. Okay, that's funny. Now I know she likes MC Hammer. Now I probably also know how old she is, but it's also just not helpful. So you want to use this whole space to help people understand more about your brand because we've got two seconds to decide if we want to follow you or not. And the fact that you love like MC Hammer, like that was too hard for me to figure out and that doesn't help me. I just need to know, how do you help me? How does your brand help me? So we're going to change your Instagram bio to tell people what type of content you post. So this isn't a resume and you don't even have to say, I help people to do blah, blah, blah. Just tell people what kind of content they can expect you if they follow you. What kind of content will they see? What is the promise? What is it you're going to be helping them with? What what problem is it that you solve? What type of niche are you specifically uh, obsessed with at the moment? Like this all relates to your personal brand. Now that we've changed her bio and her picture, it's much more identifiable. We've also changed her name. Now, if somebody were to see a great post from Lisa and click on her Instagram account, this is what they see. They've got like two seconds to look at the content and go like, what? It's, huh? What does she post about? Like, what is her brand? Because the content's all over the place. Don't make the mistake of trying to post content that's trendy or popular or it's what everybody, or it's just going to get you likes. Post content that's truly valuable to the person who it is you're trying to help. Like pick a niche and stick with it. This is your brand. This is how you help people. And her content no offense, is was all over the place. So what we did was changed up her content. So as you can see here, the content delivers on the promise of the bio. The bio says that she posts five-minute makeup tutorials for busy moms who've got no time for makeup. And now if I glance at the content on her page, it's like, oh, that matches up. Consistency is part of your personal brand. And it starts there. Like you've got to start by building a brand that's really identifiable, that's easy for people to understand so that when the person who's looking for you finds you, they're like, this is what I was looking for. Now, this is a great bio makeover. If that's something you're struggling with, I've got a great tool for you there. We also help people grow their Instagram. It's called Insta Club Hub and it, it's a membership. It's amazing. Whether you're trying to figure out like what to post um, how to use like some of the new features on Instagram. Should you use hashtags? Should you not? Like, and how to spend less time on the app to attract people to your personal brand, to your business. We would love to help you. I am going to give you a link right now that's going to give you 14 days access to this incredible opportunity for just $7. This is something you're trying to figure out. Let me give you the shortcut. Instagram is a beast. We study this full time. I promise you'll be blown away. So give it a try, $7, 14 days. The link is below in our description. Hey, I know it's a lot and I wanna thank you for staying with me to this point. I also want you to know it's possible and I wanna be very realistic and tell you that your brain is not gonna pop off in five months time unless you're so good 
at creating the kind of content that just goes viral because it's so helpful and people who are your avatar are sending it to other people who are your avatar. I mean, it's possible. I've seen it happen. I can give you some great examples. How about Dr. Mary Claire Haver, who opened up her TikTok and instead of like doing all the fancy stuff that everybody else was doing and the dancing on TikTok, she just decided to talk about the thing that she was most incredibly passionate about, and that is women's hormone health. And in doing so, she grew overnight. Today, she has over 2 million followers on TikTok and has been able to monetize her personal brand to far exceed her earnings as a medical doctor. That's possible for you too. And guess what? She's a menopausal woman. So you can do this in midlife, but you got to be real. You got to be authentic. You can't expect to pop off overnight. You just can't. You have to do this because it's the mark that you want to leave. Don't do this. If, if you're doing this because you want to be famous, it just won't happen. Like it, the universe, God doesn't work that way. Like you have to really do this because you want to serve others and you love it and not expect that it's going to pop off overnight and not expect that you're going to have millions of followers by the end of the year. You got to stick to this and you got to, you've got to continually get better at creating content. Yes, it's about creating content because you can create a personal brand, but how is anyone going to find out about it unless you're either running ads or posting to social media? Pick one platform and dominate it. And by dominate, I mean like you don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to be on all the platforms, but pick one and know it inside and out. If that one happens to be Instagram, I'm your girl. Check us out at instaclubhub.com. That is the Instagram growth membership that my son and I uh, operate together. And we'd love to help you. Like we're really good at it too. Like really good at it. Especially helping those of you who are midlifers trying to build your own personal brand. And I am so excited to hear about your journey. So if you've decided to do this, you decide, okay, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to start putting the work in today and start defining my personal brand. I'm going to decide what my thing is. I'm going to download that and I'm going to do this. I want you to declare it below this episode. Declare it on Patreon, wherever you're listening, or if you're watching this on YouTube, declare it below this video. Because when you do that, you put that message out to the universe. Remember, your personal brand isn't just about creating it and then they will come. Like you got to tell people about it. And the time to do that is right now. Hey, I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. <music> 